Right, welcome to the way of the servant as part of the, the books that in the series, like uh, way of the uh, way of mastery. But actually, we're not using that much of the book. So we're, we're say traveling around in the book of Joel parenthesis in eternity, um, the way of the servant, the book, and a New Testament. So today, we do the scriptural references scriptural references uh, related to the idea of servantship and and that's kind of yeah nice to read um it is actually absolutely beautiful what is being shared and um so i'm using john john 15 and i'm using um paul's letters prison letters uh, and those are just totally amazing. I uh, was with Paul this morning in prison and it was like this. It was really like this for me when I read it. It's like it, it touched me so deeply. So I, I love to share some of that with you. Um, yeah, so talking about servantship. Um, you never know how that's going to look. And that's really true. So that is as raw and as pure and as deep and as direct um, as it is. Uh, and that's that beautiful to see that. So you go through everything, in other words. You go through every part of the, say, undoing of you with all your ideas, with all the ideas about uh, what awakening is in transformation, which has in the end nothing to do with the actual process and this is um say great to look at it because we can take certain parts out of it and and have a, have a different look at it so we do this of course with with many of our meetings we actually take time to go through what you know or what you have heard like a hundred times maybe even more but you didn't stand still or maybe not as still as you could and miss, miss for instance, a little part in it. That happens to me all the time. So when I, when I start reading it again and taking really a lot of time to, to slow it down, to actually hear what it says, it, it becomes absolutely beautiful. And it seems like it's coming alive, just like I had with Paul in the prison letters. I had no idea. So, and, and I cannot explain it either, of course. I cannot explain what that was, but that was a recognition and then joining of minds, which is totally beautiful. So this and more will pass by today. And um, I'd like to start with something that I already read to you. But it's so great to to use it as an introduction again to the idea of servantship. Even though this idea of servantship might get a little turnaround uh, today too in something that uh, that um, John is saying. And but I'll keep that for what it is for now. So first we're going to to listen to uh, say a part a really like an. Uh, poetic part of of this book like the um, way of the servant and so we actually use uh, i think it's book two yeah we use book two a bit and um maybe i should put it out. i think we read this together i don't know exactly I, i'll leave it for this so sit back and relax i would invite you to do that and I'm starting to read um, in this poetic part of uh, book two of The Way of the Servant, which is really like a chapter. I am a circle of heavenly light, embracing all things, knowing all things, allowing all things. My splendor fills the vastness of space 
and is contained between two thoughts. The wind is birthed from my holy breath and carries my glory to all far places. I am the power by which all dreams are dreamt. I am the purpose of all actions performed. I am the way, the truth and the life. And the whole of creation returns to the Father through me. I am the prayer, the praying and the answer. I am the dream, the dreamer and the awakening. I am the sin, the sinner and the salvation. I am the vast ocean from which the dewdrop arises. I am the tear on the cheek of a newborn who brings me into form and time. I am the words before your eyes, the writer and the one who even now reads. I am the one dreamer bold enough to imagine the illusion of separation and the one worthy of releasing the allure of sleep. I am simply that I am. I am simply that I am. So I want to be still with this for just a moment. All right, thank you. So I wanted to start like this, just to be quiet or still for a moment. And um, so um, today, the like the biblical references, and we go to that in a moment. But actually, I want to start with this idea, which is um, what I recognize uh, with the idea of Paul being in prison and writing his letter, like totally loving we we come to that later but uh, what i i want to say is this is like the the circumstances in which you go through your transformation or your awakening the circumstances where you think like well this is so heavy or it's so difficult or it's so whatever it is you know is only is only uh, say um because of the the idea that you hold that there's an order of difficulty in that like as if one thing is more difficult to 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 see truly than another thing and this can keep you quite busy so um, because it's like to you it has become really important for instance just to mention an idea it's like imagine that I don't have uh, finances and i'm struggling with that for years 
so that has become for me very like a hot item very important um, I invested all my energy into that to trying to solve that problem so it's it's really like um, a hot item it seems to be much more difficult than any other area in my existence where I try to deal with the problems that I meet see and what I try to say is this is like this has only to do with the way that you look at it with the way that you used to looking at it and um, that makes the difference like you think you can compare uh, one um, so-called difficulty in your life with another and that that comparison makes sense just because of the way how important it is to you you could say like how deep your investment is in it and um, so this I realized when I was reading um, say Paul's uh, Paul's letter Paul's prison letter it's like no matter what in what situation you are this always works like it is not dependent on the on the order of difficulty that you see or that you compare yourself with with others or with yourself uh, with the fields that you are heavily invested in and um, you make that a, a huge obstacle if you think there's a difference but it's good to know that it, that there is no order of difficulty in illusions you know in in illusions in the sense of okay you you don't see what is going on if you would see it you would be able to step out of it you're actually not seeing what you're doing that's why you're so say absorbed with it and this is an interesting uh, idea to to be aware of that there's no order of difficulty in in illusions as i say it's like no these all these um say orders is is human idea as human identity is yeah, whatever you give it whatever you put your energy in now in this um, theme comes back in everything so as a servant you could say or as an as a teacher or a healer or an who knows what whatever words you use for it as a student you all these differences are going to be uh, the same in the end you you don't see any differences any longer because you recognize like no this salvation is working no matter what uh, it doesn't matter in what form like all temporary forms are um yeah are equal in that sense like in, f in fact you discover they're meaningless or in fact you discover it's not where and where you really abide so it's it keeps you busy more as a distraction from your true purpose than anything else so why am i mentioning this well i i mentioned this in relationship with with where paul is gotten himself into like being in prison i was i was considering for myself okay so imagine i'm in prison so would i do my practice different like would i read different like well at this point not anymore um, because I'm I'm in the middle of uh, of all of it like all this all these ideas are represented and I'm not um, say taking distance off of them I invite them in I allow them to be there I recognize them as all part of my say human frame of reference there's no order in there at all it's it's in that sense a chaos but it's it's uh, like all inclusive so i cannot say like well that's not part of me no it's it's a total responsibility for my frame of reference as a human being as an as an at least say the part that is thinking these things in my mind is is the cloud that i recognize to come from from here and not from somewhere else it cannot attack me it cannot do anything that's that is my say realization in that and it doesn't say anything about me at the same time 
it represents an, an echo, say, of, of the past, like it's representing past ideas that I don't take to be myself any longer. Now, this is, of course, a very uh, general way to sharing this. Um, so, but um, this is, in your awakening, this is going to be, you could say tested, but it's not really tested. It's more by you taking more responsibility, you start to see um, that everything is inclusive. There's no exception to be made. No, everything is welcome. I'm inviting it in. I'm not doing anything with it in the sense of um, trying to solve it or to, uh, trying to work at it or who knows what. N not anymore. But um, I'm also not denying it that it exists. Now and then, uh, whether you find yourself in prison or whether you find yourself in the most incredible situation that you could ever come up with or whether you just started a love relationship or whether you uh, just went through a divorce or whether you just um, left so-called left someone behind and walk around in grief um, all this like it's all inclusive it's all part of this say human frame of reference recognizing every part of it as part of me um, but it doesn't stop there so i think this is what we what we will be talking about today like it will come back in in the th uh, things that i share but also like just giving uh, paul as an example like whether you whether you cannot go anywhere whether you're completely locked up, whether in prison or in, in your thoughts <laughs> frame, um, that would be the same situation in that sense, if you identify with the place that you find yourself, if you see that as something that you are. So today we're about to, to leave that place, you could say. It's like we were actually not taking that place in which we've think we find ourselves to be our um, home it's like no it's, it's it's a bunch of ideas that i believe in uh, as long as i do and suddenly i start to see it in a different way and it, it didn't bind me at all or it there was no reason for me to be that hurt about it or there was i went through it all i had to move through it but I now I see that it was just an idea that I carried with me inevitable to go through at this point but it, it doesn't uh, say confirm any reality in me so this this came to us too through through a question of someone who said like how to look at this is like um, in relationships people seem to come and go like some pass on before you know it like dear friend suddenly um, passes on dies like suddenly is not there anymore and on a daily basis I was so used to it to be with this one and now suddenly it's gone it's like what what on earth is this what is going on? <laughs> and um, I refer to that a little bit in the last meeting that we have with the funeral. It's like, well, there's always a possibility to experience everything different. But at the same time, you cannot, um, say, uh, stop yourself from going through the feelings that you have. And that's and that's an important step to 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 know that you that that's okay to go through it. It's like invite those feelings. Don't push them away. No, cry as much as you as you do, or um, allow yourself to grieve through a you know, go go through a grieving process, and and all these things. It's not that in your awakening or transformation that you um, don't have those feelings or anything. No, it, it is just that 
you're going to say experience this now different because you are aware of of the alternative that is in you and that is great so so it's like it doesn't take away difficult situations or what appears to be a difficult situation but now with what you know and what you can uh, say ask for what you realize yourself to be you you can come to an, a different way of dealing with every aspect of your human life too and and you become more and more conscious of what is actually going on so an idea of um, say if you if you have an experience yourself of um, there's light and there's love and i can go within to to connect with source myself um, that can be like an incredible help in um, going through a process of like grieving or going through a process like um, uh, losing someone you love you know going through that and um, so it doesn't take away the, you can almost say like an, an biological response to the situation like i know for myself if something occurs that that looks like an, a human um, say a human occurrence i still have a response to it uh, almost like a physical response to it um, i cry for a moment but then at the same time it's like my mind um let's go of it too and if it comes back that's fine too i i'm not pushing that away but also i'm on the other hand also not keeping keep bringing in ideas that are related to what happened if you know what i mean it's like i don't bring the occasion back in i don't do that either so then it's like the the, the release of this is in fact continuous so for for one moment i go through this intensity and release that if the next day i still have something to to release yes absolutely and i keep repeating that so to speak i keep dying in that and like i have nothing to say about it i go through that i allow that to happen to me so this is really helpful and going through an grieving process or um, going through an intensity in which there's an um, really say this discombobulating situation or a situation that really disrupts for a moment your patterns your your ideas it seemed to come out of nowhere but it's also like a great opportunity for your um, for your awakening, for your uh, transformation. So I, re I remember this for me too, it's like going through an intensity like that, like a huge disruption. I uh, started to release uh, this idea, like all these feelings, uh, releasing them. At the same time, in fact, inviting more that needs to be released too. Inviting that in too, it's like, well, since I'm here doing this, I invite that in too to go through it and to, in, in fact, like wash wash that away at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense in what I'm sharing, but it, to me, it is it is really like a beautiful place to to be in the first place, so no matter what the situation is, because if you become quiet, anything can come up for the release of it for like your dying daily practice is a practice of release and release is, brings a different experience to you in which you suddenly are like uh, taken out of it too so it isn't it isn't first isn't dying it's like a downward movement and it uh, it changes into an um, re-establishment of of a connection that is in you 
So I hope this is helpful to you. Like you can use this in all kinds of situations, but it's so important to recognize that you should not suppress anything. You should not uh, deny it or spiritualize it or um, say overthink it. That's all not necessary. So the greatest thing to do is to to allow these feelings to come up and see your your natural response to it um, and letting it flow, letting uh, releasing it. So did Paul do that in, in prison too? Yeah, probably he did too, yeah, absolutely. So maybe we should read some of Paul. Now I um, read it first in English and then Michelle will, uh, she shared it in French to me and I will play that too. Um, so this is the prison letter from Paul to Philemon. Philemon was a friend of him. A younger friend is what I read, like a younger friend, and um, who owned a church somewhere. He was like a rich guy, but it doesn't matter. So here's what what um, Paul writes, which is totally amazing, I think. He says it this way: If there is, therefore any comfort in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any tender mercies and compassions, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be of the same mind having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. This part I'll repeat again, it's so lovely. If there is therefore any comfort in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any tender mercies and compassions, Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be of the same mind, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Doing nothing through faction, Faction is something like fragment, fragmenting, like a little sub subgroup or sub something. Like doing nothing through faction or through vain glory, like pride, but lowliness of mind. Each counting other better than himself. Not looking each of you to his own things, but each of you also to the things of others. So he's saying this to this so-called rich person who has a lot of mm, possessions. In lowliness of mind, each counting other better than himself not looking each of you to his own things, but each of you also to the things of others, like making no comparisons whatsoever. Have this mind in you, which was also in Jesus Christ, who being in the form of God, counted it not a price to be on an equality with God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as man, he humbled himself, becoming obedient even unto death, yea, 
the death of the cross. Have this mind in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, counted it not a price to be on an equality with God, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of man, and being found in fashion as man. He humbled himself, becoming obedient even unto death, yea, the death of the cross. See, now this is great to read this. See, I know a little bit about the background. It's a prison letter. He's in prison. He writes this. If there's therefore any comfort in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any tender mercies and compassions, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be of the same mind, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Ah, that's so great. I love that. So, does that work? Yes. <laughs> that's, like, that's so great to read that. I love that. I love that. I love that from, from him writing this, sharing this. Like, we're of one mind. Like, nothing can imprison that. Like, no, this goes beyond all of it. Being, it's like, in one mind, being in a whole mind, not excluding anything, not comparing anything, just pure in the experience of that. Like, ha. Huh. So he still brings everyone home, if you read it, you know, it's just amazing. He brings you home. He literally is healing you while you read it. He's putting you right in the same place as he is. And that has nothing to do with the location, but it has to do with your home, you know, like this. It's like, oh, it's your home. It's, it's home. So that's so, so beautiful. Here we are. donc quelques consolations en Christ. Si aucune consolation d'amour. S'il y a communion de l'esprit, si de tendres miséricorde et compassion remplissaient ma joie, que vous soyez de même avis, ayant le même amour, étant d'un commun accord, un esprit ne faisant rien par faction et pour vaine gloire mais dans l'humilité chacun comptant l'autre mieux que lui-même ne regardant pas pas chacun de vous à ses propres choses, mais chacun de vous aussi aux choses des autres. Et 
ayez en vous cette pensée qu'il était aussi en Jésus-Christ qui était sous la forme de Dieu. Il n'a pas considéré comme un prix d'être sur un pied d'égalité avec Dieu, mais s'est vidé lui-même, prenant la forme d'un serviteur, étant fait dans la ressemblance des hommes, et étant trouvé au monde En tant qu'homme, il s'est humilié, devenant obéissant jusqu'à la mort. Oui. La mort de la croix. Thank you, Michel, for that. So you can see, it's like you can see, and this is for, for everyone the same, the same story. Is is like this comes to life, this comes to life in you, and it comes to life in you, like literally these Bible passages. And I love, I love to use that more and more because it's like that comes to life when you're actually allowing that to touch you. You know, to read what it says and let it completely affect you. Literally communicate with it. And seeing that Paul is standing right next to you. And literally, like literally offering you everything. You know, you cannot, you cannot uh, experience that um, by just looking at the book or reading through it, looking for something or anything. No, it's like, no, here something really profound happens. Like there is a real communication being offered. It, the Bible, so to speak, is alive. It is a living word. It is a, it's like directly related to source and it has everything to do with you since the source is in you. So it's almost like you look in a mirror, like you look in a perfectly clean, bright mirror, looking at your own holiness for just an instant and immediately it, it becomes overwhelming. It's just like I was overwhelmed with the idea. It's like it's an overwhelming experience if you allow that to happen to you. So, and it can only come to life in you. And that is so beautiful. It is so beautiful to, to let that happen to you and uh, to, to just be completely vulnerable to allow that to occur. Of course, I, say this very dramatic now because I I'm in the middle of an experience like that but this this is everything to do with you this is just like the the gift I receive to share with you and with Michelle she was just reading it going through like when Paul speaks about one mind that's you it's like you're a whole part of that it is directly related to all the love in the universe, which is you. So this is how personal it gets, you could say. It's like it becomes so personal, so private, so intimate that there's no, yeah, there's no boundary at that point. So that's so beautiful. So um, bringing back some other uh, parts in this, like since we're <laughs> Since we're into uh, reading New Testament right now, uh, I have some John 15 that I'd love to bring to you. Love and joy perfected. 
So here's a phrase you've heard like a thousand times, but if you actually listen to what it says, and you're going to do that right now, it's like, as the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. This is Jesus saying this. This is John saying this. This is any whole mind telling you this. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. So love and joy is perfected in you. If you keep my commandments, my Father's commandments, love one another. Love your Father. Love one another. That's all. You will abide in my love, just I, as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. So this is all totally personal for you. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. And this is where the idea of servantship completely breaks open. But it can only break open um, if you allow yourself to hear what the master is sharing. Like for all things that I heard from my father, I have made known to you. So it's like that is that is included in you. That is you can recognize that in yourself. Everything is already given you. There's nothing that you don't get from that, so to speak. No, it's it's a matter of um, recognizing it in yourself that it is there. And living by that, not being distracted from it. And not being distracted is, is for instance, being tempted to conflict, being tempted to uh, ignore being tempted to compare or to compete. If that does not happen, then this is your natural inheritance, like it's completely given. You did not choose me, but I chose you and have ordained or appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you, that you love one another. So it's like your practice, your, your willingness to do this. I chose you and you're appointed to do, to do this. Like you're called to do this and you're doing it like i have chosen you that's what jesus said like i have chosen you and i've ordained you that you should go and bear fruits like literally not only listening to this message no letting it bear fruit in yourself um, coming to the realization that there is literally nothing outside of you coming to the realization that you're whole and perfect as your father has created you. Coming to the realization that um, there's no, uh, say there's no exception in love. These things, whatever you ask, in my father's name, he may give you. Love one another. So it's like in the in the asking the father, I could go a little bit deeper into that. It's like asking the father is like asking spirit for everything that you need. Spirit being the bridge between you and the father. Um, you as an, so like 
in the recognition of your Christ mind, in recognition of you awakening to your Christ mind, uh, seeing that everything that you ask uh, to Spirit will be given to you in a way that is helpful for you. And yeah, so that's, don't forget about that, it's like use that. Become complete. You could say like, be complete, be whole, be of good comfort, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Become complete. That's a great one too, that it's actually said this way. It's like become complete. See that you're not separate from anything it's like there's always connection there's always like you're a whole part of all of it so your brother is not separate from you god is not separate from you paul is not separate from you or like there's no such thing as separation become complete don't allow yourself to think in terms of separation and of differences be of good comfort know where your comfort is your comfort is not in conflict your comfort is in peace be of one mind don't think in terms of separation but be of one mind know that minds communicate because there is only one of them like there's no mind outside yourself. No, it's all you. It's all inclusive. It is you communicating directly with every aspect of creation. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Thank you so much for joining in that. Um, so the the next part that I want to do is say read something of the um, chapter two. So you can read with me. Um, I open up the ChristMind.info um, website where we can read directly. I'm starting at as a book two. Uh, I'll show you. It's not even here. Wait. So we start at 110. If you feel like reading with me, you're welcome to do that. Otherwise, I read it. That's fine too. Whatever you like. So, and, um, okay, we're just going to read it. Come back to it later. So I'll start. The servant gives as he has been given, but remembers it not, caring not, like remembers it not, not, not letting your right hand know what your left hand is doing and all this. 
caring not for the accolades of the world. He collects no ribbons and keeps no trophy. But the face of Christ seen in each he serves is etched in his awareness forever. He remembers them and gives thanks to the Father for the servant lives and the simplest of truths. My brothers and sisters are my salvation. The servant knows she fixes nothing, seeing not a fearful world. She does not deliver it from evil, looking not upon illness. She calls not herself a healer. Therein learn the secret of the miraculous. The servant does nothing save to extend love. Therein learn the secret of the miraculous. The servant does nothing save to extend love to the Christ who dwells in another. Having learned to see past the appearances that are in the world. And the one who is ill recognizes that the servant has recognized her as she is and decrees. I am seen as I am and release my illusions now. Love heals and love alone. Those unaccustomed to miracles run after the servant, asking, How do you do these things? To which the servant replies, Love has done these things. Of myself, I only ask that my father correct my perception of you. Love will flow through any mind that asks for and allows the correction of its perceptions. How then does the servant serve? By being, By only, being the of love. only the presence of love. <laughs> the extension of love, untainted by the thought of a doer, is the quality of genuine service a reflection in this world of the love which begets externally, eternally, the holy and only begotten child of God. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so you see here, um, um, this, this is kind of an interesting part and since, since we just also read like I no longer call you servants because I've everything that I receive from from the father I have given to you like I've I've shared all that with you so now you see that in the in the doing part it's like you being an instrument of truth you could say uh, to to talk the language that we speak it's like it is like you actually don't know what you're doing so you trust you have a recognition of 
okay, my source is say, expressing itself through me. And of course, that source is in me. So it's me expressing that. Sure. And but now I know where that comes from. And I trust that like I put my faith in that I, I just let that flow out. And and this makes it like, it doesn't really matter whether we use the term term servant or not. It's not that I want to make a discussion about it. But um, the say the sense of equality, and this is something that we looked at the other day too, it's like the equality with Christ mind, since that is your mind, uh, there is no differences. There is no difference between you and the Christ if you realize who you truly are and, and being in that experience, then it doesn't matter any longer. So in, in awe, we saw, saw that the other day too, it's like awe is not appropriate in this situation. Like awe is only to God and to the love of God, since also that is in you. But it's like you're a son of the father. So it's like it's, you did not create your own father. He created you in his likeness. Sure. But that is the direction. So that's uh, always uh, appropriate in that sense. Uh, so the equality, so uh, just to get it clear, so to speak, the equality between you uh, in, in your service you in your discovery of who you truly are and extending yourself in the things that flow through you um, because you have invited it in and are available to express this in one communicate this by your own experience um, say makes that you're a friend instead of a servant like a servant doesn't know what the master is thinking but you actually know where it comes from that flows through you so that makes you an equal that makes you a friend more than anything so that that's sufficient to work with so to speak that's my experience like it's sufficient to work with that's why i can still enjoy a book like the the way of the servant um uh, perfectly all right um because um hearing what what this says makes it doable for me to enjoy that too and to to be one with that so to speak to to recognize the communication in that but that's it's personal so the the one part that i think is is like why would you want to use words like she she does this and she does that like that's kind of a um, confusing part that's not necessary to put in there like making this all in the male um, has no gender connotation to it whatsoever no it is you as the son of God like you relating you recognizing yourself as the son of God which is which is not a gender it is just an extension of your father and it has been confused with um, with gender for for a long time, but that's that's not necessary. So I, yeah, I really change it in the book for myself when I read it. It's like I really <laughs> cross it. It's like no, that's not necessary. So it's like, like just stay with with he and him and his because it's like the son of God, and there's a very good reason for that. So it has nothing to do with gender. That being said, um, yeah, it's great to um, go through these episodes where we actually discover something uh, like we just did with the reading. So I don't know if you can remember anything that we just read, um, but that's also not so important. So you can read it again. So you go to this website and you can read it again. Um, but it, it brings you into a certain uh, recognition and that's what I love about it. Um, yeah, so the, the recognition that I have with that is um, the extension, not caring about, uh, here it was said like trophies and accolades or um, it's like rewards or um, worldly uh, recognition 
or all this stuff you know it's like no that doesn't matter that that's not what this is about at all i know that i turned down like it was a couple of years ago i turned down and it's like very sophisticated uh, place where i could speak and it was all kinds of stuff related to it there was a whole marketing set up for it that i i stepped into if i would have said yes and i had like oh no please no i cannot do that i don't feel i don't feel that at all that is not where i work you know this is our work but this is not where i extend myself that is not the place where that happens for me and uh, that still is very free to to know that no i live i you gotta see it like this is like i live on a day-by-day -day basis i don't care about tomorrow in that sense i don't care about tomorrow no it's like if i'm fully present here today if I stay in my remembrance, if I um, say allow peace to flow through me and extend myself as what I am, um, I know everything is fulfilled. I know everything is complete. So I, I don't, that is not a concern whatsoever. I don't need to do special things for that. Um, because then I immediately bring it back down into a horizontal way of dealing with it. And I, that, that's just not attractive to me whatsoever. So this is really lovely. Um, yeah, so this is what I wanted to share with you today. Um, so we, we will play some music. And um, if you have a question or anything, please let me know. Or you want to bring something in, you want to share a poem, or you discovered something in the book that you really love to share that was so amazing, or in the New Testament that you just discovered for yourself. Be totally my guest, whether you write it in the comments or whether you say it here in class live. In either way, thank you for everything. Thank you so much. <laughs> 